One. Zero. Dire wave. method cannot justify the scientific method. Therefore, it itself is a dogmatic religious presupposition.
a bunch of bad trips with Indians. Had a bunch of desert drugs in my system. Smoking a little bit of that snake. Smoking that rattlesnake tail. Getting high from licking scalps. You know you can get high from licking scalps? You will see into Mother Earth's cerebral cortex when you lick scalps like the Indians used to do. That's what we're going to be talking about today. When we get our boy Tristan, Tristan, which is quebec for meat. If you didn't know, that's the quebec word for meat. And looks like he's coming. Tristan. We're waiting on our little boy Tristan. What's up, Tristan? All right, can you hear me now, baby? You hear me? Yes, I can. All right. We got to make sure the audience can hear us, though, because I was talking shit about you saying that your name means meat in French. Is that true? Tristan? It means like, it means uh, has a large slab of meat. Uh-huh. On on, yeah. on his it, back, like a back. No, ass. no, no. It, between between his legs, it's that's the the actual. Oh, you're talking direction. about in the between the nuts and the booty hole, that little area. That's where you have no. a. Okay, I see. No, it, it's a, it's a, it, Tristan. Actually, it, in in it's a French name. It actually means superior to Jay Dyer. Um, <laughs> it's a weird, like direct translated. That's exactly what it means. Okay, in the Quebec, right from the original Quebec. Yes, exactly. Okay. What's up, dude? Thanks for coming on. What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. Big shot. I uh, appreciate you talking to us little people. And um, I'm still trying yeah. to figure out the hierarchy, the totem pole. Uh, yeah, given today's oh, la, 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 Indian stuff, the totem pole is a better image for today's. So, because I don't know if I'm higher on the totem pole than you now. Because LJ Dyer in this totem pole, you actually want to be on the bottom. Because if you will only use your imagination, you will realize that the totem pole is God, you know and what? God is everything. And you are also God if you just listen to the machine elves and put the pee pee in the poo poo. In a world of pure imagination, <laughs> can anybody? I could. Could y'all hear the first few minutes of me talking about talking shh about Tristan or not? I couldn't tell if I had the, the the sound messed up. Can y'all tell me? I was talking smack, talking about how you could get high from uh, smoking Indian uh, rattlesnake rattlers. You could get high that way. You can get high from licking scalps. The Indians used to do that. You could see into the cerebral cortex of Mother Earth herself, yes. Gaia. Yes. Gaia. Scribe. We call it a third eye scrying, and you you basically, yeah. I don't I don't want to get into that what that means on the uh, on the dark web. Third eye scrying. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, did you know that that uh, when the Indian was, they suspected that he was gay. They used to say that uh, he was light in his. No, I just screwed my joke up. What's the Indian word for slippers? What are Indian slippers called? I, I thought it was they would just say like he he was. Uh, I, th I think they, they would name they would give him different names when they yeah, knew he they would be were, he would be um, walks walks with Jay. He Dye would be sassy like antelope, little mm. little sassy antelope. Yeah, antelope like around. like like stands like Jay would be his name. <laughs> like yes, um, meat on ass like Tristan. Was another thing that they you you saying you, you saying I got a, a nice some nice meaty butt cheeks, Jay? You like you like my meaty booty? I mean, that's what the that's what the Quebec translation of your name means. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Quebec, which is a different from the Quebecistan, the normal yeah. French. Anyway, so what we decided to do today was two 
Psychonaut movies. It has nothing really to do with 4th of July in America and all that. Uh, Tristan said, let's do a 4th of July stream. I said, let's do a dystopia Psychonaut stream, <laughs> um, <laughs> which it's not really dystopian, but that's okay. So we did. got a nice mix, right? We got like, you got kind of, you got, you have like in the inside the mind of a boomer, uh, which is altered states. It's like the, the, the boomer oh, mind you see, state. You already, you read my mind, dude. We did not coordinate right. our jokes because I have a bunch of boomer jokes in my altered states <laughs> analysis. You already read my mind. Right. I mean, that's what that movie is, dude. Altered states. It's like, I'm watching it. Um, and Jessica and I are laughing out loud half the movie. I know. I was cracking up too. It was, uh, Jamie and I watched it maybe two years ago and I was, I started falling asleep because I thought it was really stupid. And I woke up at the end with that. I'll save the ending for later because it's priceless. But uh, I was cracking <laughs> up when I woke so up funny. out of my sleep and I was like, what is happening? I didn't know if I was still dreaming or if this was really the way the movie was ending. But um, so good. And then so we watched. Bad. Let's start <laughs> with this. Uh, let's start with the one you recommended, which was it was pretty damn weird. I, I didn't like it at first, and then the more that I was progressing in the plot, I was I was getting a little more into it. Um, yeah. It's called Blueberry or Renegade. It has two different titles, and it's a 2004 film by some foreign French Quebecy American Indian person. <laughs> I don't know what dude. his name is, but some uh, weirdo French nerd. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, it has uh, Michael Madsen, uh, Juliette Lewis, uh, who actually looks like a normal person in this. You know, most isn't that weird? She's like almost likable in this movie. Yeah, most of the time so when she's in the movie, she looks like a sixteen-year-old lot lizard whore. But in this movie, but she does. She does like an, a spread eagle bush shot in the film, of course. So just so you know, it's Juliet Lewis. She had to show the yoni. So we. <laughs> uh, by the way, we got a couple super chats from our friends over at the Fartifact podcast. Get it? It's called yeah. Artifact, but I said Fartifact just to piss off the people who don't like the bodily function jokes, but there's another one for you, but shout out to her. Go everybody go watch the Fartifact artifact podcast. She's uh, good at what she does and we like her. Thank you for her support with those $6 super chats. By the way, there are still super chats. Everybody, every time we do this, you got to go to Streamlabs. So the Streamlabs link in the show description or as our bro. Okay. Often puts in the chat. Just step on over to that stream labs and you can ask these two C and well, I'm more like a B level E C level E celeb. Tristan's like a D level E celeb. Like a D plus. But like I'm, I'm, I'm well, riding Jay's coattails. I'm I'm scrambling out, I'm trying to I'm trying mm -hmm. to crawl up at his legs and you know, my if I can make Jay feel insecure enough, yeah. then I can feel like maybe my celeb status is elevated a little bit. No? Damn. Who's higher on this totem pole? I mean, you got the check mark from YouTube. Right. But I was. You don't know what I had to do I, for I that, was, though. But I was eating oysters with Alex Jones the other day. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you don't know what I had to do. The things I had to do for that check mark. Um, you actually, you probably don't want to know. So technically, you're above, you're, okay. so you are a little bit above me on the e celeb meter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. We'll just we'll start some drama and take you down this week. So, <laughs> okay, let's talk about Blueberry. Thank you for recommending this. Um, it starts out with you like my eagle sound. He's like laying. Is it, isn't he? Is it like it's like a spinning camera shot of the dude laying on the ground and he's like, "I'm dead." Yes, Vincent Gallo is appearing to be dead. And uh, I don't know how quick the eagle shows up, but that made me think of America, right? I mean, there's yes, we very have a American. Bit of America today with that eagle sound. It's the most American shot in both of these movies. And uh, so Vincent Gallo is going to go on a mystical journey of sorts. He appears. Vincent to be Cassell, right? Isn't it? Isn't it Vincent Cassell? Yeah. What did I say? I meant Vincent Cassell. Gallo. Who's Vincent uh, yeah, Gallo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vincent Cassell. Vincent Gallo. I don't know that. Ernest and, and it's Gallo. not Osho for you in the chat. That was it's not Osho's booger whistle. It's Vincent no. Cassell. <laughs> Although, never mind. I get too dumb here. I was gonna do an Eagles booger whistle, which would be even higher. But an Eagles bo booger whistle would be so high pitched you couldn't hear it. It would make dogs bark. Um, alchemy, the Gnostic cross. Yeah. So the opening images, you see this this weird book that's got like a 
Gnostic looking cross of Jesus of sorts. Um, and we find out later that that's going to be a treasure map. So I kind of think what's going on is two layers of finding treasure here. So on the one level, we've got, oh, there's a golden statue somewhere. Michael Madsen, as you said, is the evil sorcerer. But we've also got this initiatory journey that Vincent Cassell is going to go on, right? That requires, so it's basically a magical journey slash battle that's going to happen. And that's not what yeah, I expected. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't but it's kind of like, it, yeah, I didn't know what to expect. It's kind of like, yeah, it's a weird movie because it, it you think it's just a normal Western. When yeah, you see the first exactly. few shots, like it just seems like a, okay, it's just some weird semi low budget Western from the early 2000s. But it actually, it's more of kind of like an alchemical journey through this guy's psyche yes. to try and reconcile like busted up parts of his psyche, right? So, um, I think it, it's, it starts out soon after the intro where it shows that manuscript thing. And it's all these pictures of like little engine man and peyote buttons and like, you know, like trippy looking, whatever they, they kind of made a mismatch of like Shipibo artwork and South American tribal yeah. artwork Aztec with stuff, yeah. Aztec stuff with native American, like, and they mix all of the aesthetic together um, into one kind of like weird mumbo jumbo general aesthetic of like animism kind of like the animistic religion and, and shamanism exactly and what what i thought was interesting about the depiction of it as opposed to like the pure you know when you watch like altered states it's kind of coming from this john c Lilly, psychonaut timothy leary um you got the, like a psychologist and an anthropologist and it's coming from this western scientific um boomer mentality whereas this one was more like a uh I don't know, kind of like a Western mysticism mixed with Eastern mysticism yeah. and animism all together. Um, and yeah, you, you mentioned like the, the dual thing about like the treasure hunt, right? So they're, they're hunting for this gold and there's this German character. What's that guy's name? Like the, the Prussian. He's like, I will bring you mountains of gold. We will go and we will get all the gold. So this guy is searching for like physical treasure. And yeah. then these other characters are looking for this sort of like spiritual power. Yes. Um, rather than physical treasure. The philosopher stoned, dude. Exactly. The stoned philosophers. Philosopher stoned. Yep. So he's laying there like basically you don't even find out because it's kind of a I guess it's a circular timeline. It kind of loops around. Yeah. So it's like a beginning. The, the beginning of the movie is where the movie more or less ends. And did you notice that right away when he's starting to see, you know, the the spiritual realm or whatever he's seeing he's basically his life is flashing before him uh mm -hmm. that he 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 sees the world like a matrix did you notice how matrixy it looked when he and then at the end yeah when, when he has yeah there, vision, there, there seem to be these like spiritual layers of yes. and the, the way that it visually portrays it i thought it was it's less hokey than a lot of these other kind of psychonaut films like it's done in a more yeah kind of it, it seems like it's a more contemplative film than a lot of these corny like i don't know like it takes some acid and watch this. It's going to trip you out, man. Um, whereas like altered states was, I don't know what the hell happened there. <laughs> we'll get into that. <laughs> but, yeah. That one is but, something um, else. But uh, so he's, there was the layers of that, but then there's also, there's a lot of serpent imagery, right? There and, is. Like, yeah. Well, she asked crocodiles. him at the beginning, remember she says, do you believe in God? Right. When yeah. he goes to see his chick, he flashes back to the kid when he's the kid and, and he goes to see his flucy. Or his yeah, so so you have soy his, Vincent Cassell, soy soy young soy Vincent Cassell before visiting he the a man. the strumpet, the ladies of the evening, the flucy market. Every saloon, yeah, every every western, every saloon has a a ladies flucy market above. Have you ever noticed that? They're every all hot. Western. They're always banging, right? <laughs> That's like all. Really the, I, mean, I guess there's nothing else to do except what trip acid, shoot people in the saloon, chew some tobacco, and go to the yeah. to the uh, strumpet market above the saloon. That's right. That's right. So he goes there and then there, there's kind of a, there's an altercation. Michael Madsen comes in. who He's actually really good in that. Like this is the perfect role for him is an evil cowboy. Like Michael Madsen should be an evil cowboy in every film. That's just how I imagine he is in real life. Like trying to dose you on acid and steal your soul. Um, so he, he comes in and kind of there's this threatening scene and some guns get pulled out and then the camera throws outside and then the guy falls out the window and you don't know what happened. You hear gunshots and the house is on fire. Right. And then that's kind of like, that's the intro traumatic event. And you don't really know what happened in there. Um, kind of a, I mean, not the most 
like amazing plot piece. You can kind of put it together after that scene that, oh, okay, well, you don't know what happened in there. So later on, maybe he'll find out. Um, but that throws him on this, like what happened? He, get, he gets like picked up by the Indians, right? Mm-hmm. They yeah. throw him out on the, in the desert. He, the is, he goes full, uh, you know, dances with wolves, right? Full Kevin Costner dances with wolves, ends up with the Indians. The dark night of the soul. He's got his, uh, yeah. So the Indians pick him up, and then what? They like, he doesn't really. Well, he gets they, injured they kind of and he falls stuff. off the horse, and he's kind of you know brought in, and they're like, all right, uh, what does every tribe do when they bring a white man in? Time to give him that ayahuasca. Give him that right, right away. <laughs> and then the Indians, he broke his back. <laughs> give him some DMT. <laughs> the, so the Indians are just sitting around, and they're so enlightened, and they're just so connected to nature, and they're like the the eagles come and they like they jump on indians arms and they're just they're so powerful and and they have long hair white man need lsd white man need dmt right so they just (laughs) immediately they get him stoned out of his mind Uh, they blow the tobacco smoke on him yeah and uh but he every time he gets injured right doesn't he get don't they kind of smoke him out (laughs) they they get him (laughs) yeah they they smoke him out with that dmt Every time yes. he gets injured, and and that's like he has to go through these stages, right? Um, and then he's you know he meets up with that dude that has a eagle spirit animal. Remember that? His buddy, his little but his buddy's like the son of the head shaman yeah, guy. Exactly. So they heal him. Do they give him? Do they give him like a potion at that time, or do they wait till later? I don't. They wait till later. I was just I was just saying he's he. But he the, goes, but the other Indians are drinking the potion. It's like they're part of this club, and they're part like they're they're getting in on the DMT. They're talking to the machine elves. They know what's up, and um, yep. so it's kind of I mean it's kind of this like hokey view of animism and of shamanism and of you know folk medicine. And it's not really how it is. It's like that. Not all the all these indigenous tribes. I want to ask just... you about that because when you watch movies, you know they always present it like there's nothing more spiritual and enlightened than pri- uh, primal, archaic, archaic revival, primitivist yeah. Indian spirituality. Like there's just this mystique that is kind of a pop culture creation. Which yeah, there's no real yeah. basis for because you live in an area where this is prevalent and the boomers fly down there to go into their little, uh, you know, sex tents and get sweaty all, all weekend. And they're basically just getting gypped by a uh, pseudo shaman. Right. Can you touch on that? That's the thing is it's like that doesn't really exist and it didn't really exist in the way that they portray it in Hollywood. Right. They, I, we have this, everybody knows that Western culture is really screwed up, right? Like big pharma, um, Everybody knows the, the nature of big pharma is to go take you know natural plant compounds, find how they can be isolated, patent them, and use them to market as drugs. Right? Like you have fentanyl, you have you know this this huge opioid crisis. All comes from the opium poppy, which is actually pretty difficult to get like really badly addicted to pure opium poppy. It's a lot different, right? You know what I'm saying? So they they've taken these things and they made them so addictive. So everybody knows about the uh, the, the bastardization of like nature the natural whatever you want to call it i mean the your conception of what nature is is so screwed up in the west right and you don't even have this they don't even have a concept of the fall in the west right uh, but they yet they somehow have this unspoken belief that western civilization is fallen yet what's not fallen is animistic religions shamanism and the noble savage myth right like this thing of um it's like the opposite, the opposite side of the coin of the take up the white man's burden of like, oh, well, like we're, we're the enlightened white man. We have to go and save these savages from this. There's the other side of the coin, which is, oh, man, like our culture is so messed up. We suck. We're so screwed up, dude. Like, man, it would just be so cool if Pocahontas was still kicking it and just like smoking DMT and ripping bong loads with her boyfriend with long hair and stuff. Like they would help us heal the planet. It's like this. It's the opposite side of the coin of that. And. Yeah, there's a lot of that kind of packed in here. And when you look at most indigenous cultures that are still around now, the way that they use these plants, it's more. And this this does get represented in this film, the kind of spiritual warfare aspect of it. All right, this gets represented between the protagonist and the antagonist, yeah. between Vincent Cassell and Michael Madsen's character. That's kind of more how they were using these compounds. And it wasn't the whole tribe. There would right. be like one guy within a group of you know maybe 10 15 20 families that were living together tribally and there was the one guy who was the uh the initiated uh, whatever uh shaman guy who would whisper to the spirits 
and it wasn't about healing the planet and we're all just going to be healed we all just have to heal our trauma it was about power dynamics right it was in the way the way that crowley was using psychedelics is actually how indigenous yes, groups were using exactly. psychedelics and still use them they use them for power over other people they use them for getting windows into other realms to get information to get power and strength over the external environment and other people in the psychos like what uh, the, psychologically the as well sphere. as like physically and what matthew sphere. mcconaughey calls the the shaco sphere the chakras the chakra sphere the chakra sphere yeah uh now again though people have to understand that people thought i was joking about the boomer sex tense i'm not you have confirmed that as eyewitness account out there peeping with your peepers into the boomer sex tents all the Tristan out there scouts this stuff like reconnaissance intel for us and he sits and watches right. for hours at night up in a perch he's got a little a little crow's nest perch and he watches the boomers for hours on end doing who knows what in the tents with the shamans <laughs> gotta do that in the Bill Cosby voice with the shamans <laughs> with the shamans uh, so yeah, but that no, that's that true. Like it's it's through. a very abusive. There's very abusive stuff that goes on in a lot of these kind of shamanic uh, circles, and you're not most. A lot of these people are a lot of these people are alcoholics too. These people who are running these ceremonies, they get really into the drink. They really like the drink. I mean, they're using all sorts of substances to gain to try and gain power. And they a lot of them come at it as, from a place of like, oh, look, I'm trying to explore. I want the truth. Or I want to explore consciousness, whatever. Drink and they local. end up just becoming slaves to hedonism. It ends up a hedonistic endeavor of hedonistic power over the environment. And I, I think it all, a lot of it referencing Crowley is very, very, right. uh, it, it, it's well, real relevant because all of he the used psychonauts it reference Crowley. So this exactly, not, yeah. because he was doing this before anybody. And he ended up finding through his own exploration that the same way that in shamanic circles, they're using dance, drugs, and ritual sex, he ended up tying this in with Golden Dawn rituals, which mm -hmm. was using a lot of the same um, things as well. And then kind of selling this to a lot of the aristocracy in Europe and to a lot of the West. Yeah, you're and talking about like the Macarena? Exactly. That's that the most powerful it. shamanic initiation, actually. Yeah. It'll turn you into That's Ricky high Martin. Level. The high level demon. Turn you into a sassy little Ricky Martin. Remember your name? <laughs> your, your Indian name is Sassy Antelope? I think it was Tristy Martin was my Indian name. Your Indian name is Fabulous Moose. <laughs> <laughs> how about uh, Humping? Moose how about in honor of uh, John C. Lilly, you could be Humping Dolphin? <laughs> All right. Uh, why are y'all being so tight tonight? Just throw them super chats at me. Put them into those go in directly into my bit fund, which is my Bitcoin hedge fund to make me uh, a competitor with Georges Soros. And then let's go on to where we at. So I'm sorry, I'm getting way lost here. Oh yes, no. He, he so he had that uh, he had like that scene where his psyche's kind of fractured or whatever. Yes, and because then, he uh, has a trauma memory he suppressed. Exactly. And, and that and this is another thing that it shows is that the psychedelic experiences are based on trauma. So it, it gets sold in the West a lot of, of uh, you're going to you're going to go in, you're going to heal your trauma, right? Like you're going to go in there and you're going to figure out what that trauma was. You're going to look at it from just the right angle and you're going to heal it. But there's no real framework for healing within this. Right. It's like you're looking at in the West. Right. You're looking at psychiatrists, psychologists, um, you know, all funded uh by by who knows who we know who back in the 70s right you had uh, timothy leary was has openly admitted to working with cia uh john c Lilly was getting state department funding was it navy that was uh that was funding oh and i and uh yeah and cia and if uh if you go and listen to the old interview that i did with dr richard spence who wrote his book on crowley's intelligence work he makes a compelling yeah. argument like tristan was saying that crowley was probably doing um proto mk ultra style work when he wrote his drug diary which people in britain huxley's read that would kind of evolve into the nascent british version of mk ultra tavistock this kind of stuff uh, they yeah. were doing the exact same stuff over there the west in this or the u.s was doing the same type of stuff yeah with their and this program. is what the, the the experiences that people have when they go into these states it's an experience of trauma right because it takes away it puts you in the back seat. Your rational mind kind of takes a back seat 
and then experiential phenomena become really more intense mm. and it makes you more impressionable it makes you more suggestible and then it opens you up to everything right the, the, it's like the the doors of perception open up they say and that, that actually is true but what's behind that right what's actually behind that is the question and i think this is an interesting film because it does kind of show this aspect of like spiritual warfare and power dynamics is what's really going on in this and the battles that are going on these shamanic battles it's not just about one guy healing himself it's about him taking back power from this other guy who's like the dark sorcerer shaman who says he wants to be able to kill with his spirit is what he says michael Matt's like i want to be able to kill with my spirit and i think crowley's work he actually did kind of openly talk about a lot of this he openly talked about a little bit he talked about his use of mescaline and peyote uh, but he wasn't that explicit in a lot of his stuff as well. And a lot of these scholars who've looked deeper at Crowley, and I'm not saying like Cro Crowley, he's, a, he's, a, he's an idiot. He's a buffoon. He's a, uh, he, he was an, a, a power hungry uh, addict who spent his life obsessively putting his pee pee in the poo poo and teaching other people how to do that for power over other people. But when you read like some of like, here's a quote from his, the book of the law. He talks about, he says, I'm the snake that giveth knowledge and delight. Oh, that's interesting, right? Who's the snake that giveth knowledge, right? So this openly Luciferian satanic philosophy there and delight, right? They always use these words like the, the garden of natural delights and stuff like that. And a lot of this imagery is really tied in with the psychedelic experiences as, as well. Like a lot of the old, um, like the prog bands in the 70s, they use this imagery a lot of like the garden of earthly delights and stuff like that about um, you know, delighting the senses and really enticing all the senses and opening up the senses and being really drunk on the senses. So then he, he says, uh, to worship me, take wine and strange drugs, whereof I will tell my prophet and be drunk thereof. They shall not harm me at all. This is a lie. This folly against self. The exposure of innocence is a lie. Be strong, O man. Enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any gods shall deny thee for this. And this quote right here, this is from like the from the book of the law that he supposedly channeled. Um, and how was he channeling, right? How was he getting into these states? He was taking tons of drugs and getting in highly crazy ecstatic sexual rituals and then having other people channel. And he was channeling this stuff as well. It was just this big hodgepodge of just basically hammering himself with drugs and sensory experiences and yoga uh he called it he brought yoga to the west so um this thing of like fear not that any god shall deny thee for this is a really interesting satanic quote and i think that's colored the psychedelic movement a lot over the uh over the decades there i'm gonna do a little poetry you ready you gotta do Ride the, uh... the snake <laughs> to the right? lake the ancient lake, baby, the snake is long, seven miles, ride the snake. He and and, and Morris, they put Crowley on, uh, what, which album cover was that? One of their albums. He's on the Crowley. Beatles, and he's on uh, Her, on Her Majesty's Satanic Request, Rolling Stones, and he's on, yeah. I don't know if he's on the Doors, but the, I think there is a Crowley Doors connection, but I was just laughing because what you when you're reading what his channeling it sounded like some it sounded like some Morrison, bullshit right? from jim morrison which is exactly like, and it's always the same site is the same yeah, like, uh satanic luciferian ideology of the snake is good the, the snake good, slithers the snake into the west and it, but yeah. jim morrison sounds like a third grader and everybody thinks this whoa that's so deep dude he said the know, snake right? is long seven miles <laughs> bro oh, my mind was blown. his skin is cold his skin right? is that's cold deep, <laughs> and he's old He's old and his skin is cold. What's and he's bold. <laughs> but, dude, I mean, who's like rhyming snake with lake? That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty rad. Uh, um, anyway. But, uh, yeah, it's funny. So, all the this is this is really the root of a lot of the uh, the, the psychedelic uh, experience has not only been you're primed with all of this media input. So, it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, when you're going into this, if you've consumed pop culture, you are going in there preceded with this Luciferian um, 
kind of sub this Luciferian ideology and satanic ideology has already been implanted in you culturally. And then you're going to open up yourself to these spiritual realms. And a lot of people, they go mad with these experiences. They come back completely psychotic or they come back psychopathic and they stop. You know, they, they say, Oh, scared, well, I understand dude. everything now, but just these people, they smash their psyche open and then they come back and they're just basically Jim Moore, like, like a slightly dumber version of Jim Morrison. And this is, I don't know what it is, but it definitely seems like more of a spiritual um, layer that's affecting this rather than just the, uh, just you know, the scared, physical dude. drugs. You're scared of your own psyche, man. You're your own worst enemy. Right. Fear is the mind killer, man. You're you're afraid of confronting your own demons, and that's what that's what uh, psychedelics force you to do, man. You're stuck in your own mental prison. That's literally how they always cast it, too. Like, dude, yeah. I've had countless i'm not countless but i've had multiple seven eight acid trips i've had two or three bad trips and it was a nightmare so no i have faced my own uh psychonaut slithering jim morrison demons right i faced. Thing, i think those bad trips actually end up being better for people than the good ones because when they come you come like if you come back from something like this and you're just like oh i'm not afraid of anything now i'm so awesome like i'm gonna do i could do anything man i'm not scared i saw the world dude yeah, I know it all, man. I know everything. And it's like people legit come back like that. Like, I know everything. <laughs> I, know I just that. know it intuitively. And it's like, it's such a delusion. It's such pre less It's so freaking demonic. It is. Yeah, it's totally And they think delusion. that every thought that pops into their head after these experiences is genius, right? true. Like, this is genius and true. Nobody's ever thought this in the ever. And you end up like Joe Rogan's like, oh, man, isn't it amazing that like, dude, we have cell phones and like, oh, it's so weird. We can like call each other. We're so evolved. We were monkeys, and now we have cell phones, dude. We're gods. We're gonna be gods, bro. Fucking dude, plastic fucking magic instrument. It's like there's. Do so you much realize that this world, thing bro. right here is like a magic wand that can take a thought and put it onto a paper, bro? But dude, Every your thought thoughts, around. like when you put your thoughts out into the world, <laughs> it manifests reality, dude. It's, I mean, it's like, if you think these are the most, like, what are you, what are you in sixth grade? What do you just realize that language is freaking amazing? Dude. We all know this. This is all stuff you, Bro. it's like, you're not the first person to ever experience we life. All, Get over it. I just had a thought. We're all one. What? We're all one. Whoa. I'm you, you're me. We're all one. I am you and you are me and we're a happy family, dude, like Barney. <laughs> Barney level philosophy, right? Exactly. I am you. You are me. We're a happy family. And we just need to like be cool and save ourselves, dude. Because like there's no God. And by the way, you, as you know, all yourself, of these bro. idiots are then also vegans within a day or two. Well, this is another thing that comes up. It's like you, 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 there's this weird guilt thing that's still there. That knowledge of sin, I think it is really, right? It's like we know, we know that we're fallen. We know that we sin. But there's something about that state that can put people in such a deluded uh, pre lest and then they come back and they think they're so enlightened and they're going to save the world and all their like Terrence McKenna. It's like if I, I have this this notion if I could just do the perfect action always, then well, the whole universe would crystallize into a perfect giant uh, dildo crystal and would penetrate the void, and we could all. He sounded like he was smoking some dildos quite a bit, actually. <laughs> he does. He was smoking a lot of dildos, and he was supposedly a pan pan lover if you know what i mean supposedly uh by the way in his book in food of the gods which i do have a lecture on in the jay's analysis archives he says he does say uh that lsd and shrooms are like a version of the they're like a satanic luciferian gnostic version of the lord's supper that's the way he casts it he says he says that eating and doing hallucinogens is the tree of knowledge Again, exactly. Which, by the way, when you say that to uh, people who are big fans of this stuff, oh, bro, you're scared. Like they mock you when you're saying the very things that these guys say, right? I mean, they say that you, you, you will have contact dude. with demons. You'll speak to demons. You'll speak to aliens and entities. John dude, C. you're Willis just such a it. pussy. You just don't realize that you're God, bro. Exactly. But I realize I'm God, and you're just afraid because you know I'm God deep down inside. I'm a God, bro. You're a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a God, and I'm more of a God than you are, dude. Because you don't, you haven't gotten rid of your huge ass ego, dude. I'd be like, well, if we're all one, then I'm you, and I'm also a God. Boom. 
it's 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 really delusional and this is this is and i i don't know if it's that these things are actually inherently bad right because it's i mean all right so looking at like god created everything and he created things good but is it the cultural yeah, context that, that these are using? Everything in your mouth, like God created. It's right, right. You're not supposed to put everything in your mouth, mouth, right? For sure. But 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 it's so funny because it's like there's this cultural dynamic that's constantly reinforcing this and pushing people towards these beliefs of this this like Gnostic yeah, religion, like exactly. you mentioned. Exactly. And yeah. so yeah, the film the film is very Gnostic, the Renegade film. So, anyways, the well, what happens next? So that he, he gets wounded. You're right then, that, that it is, but I think what trips a lot of people up, <clears throat> even with Gnostic type movies or TV shows that have spiritual themes or, uh, you know, Twin Peaks, they'll show you a lot of things that are kind of accurate in terms of like the spiritual world, I think, yeah. right? So when you're, when he's on this, this, this journey, the spiritual trip, and he's seeing into the spiritual realm, I think there's truth to that. I mean, again, if you've yeah. had bad trips, if you've had good trips, if you have done that stuff, you know, you can see how people come to that conclusion. I was just on a a podcast the other day and there was a, a dude talking about trips and he was like, how, how he said, I think that it's all symbolic and it's just your mind creating it all, man. And my argument against that is if it's only your mind just randomly creating the symbols and the archetypes, there's, if there's not a spiritual reality to it, then why does every tribe or every shamanic tradition have the same patterns in their their uh their religious rites and rituals why does every time you go into this other realm and you get dissected by the gods and then you get put back together and you come back with a spirit that helps you your avatar or familiar spirit i mean it's always the same process of initiation i mean not every single detail but the but the basic pattern uh merkia iliada has shown in his study of shamanism all over the world why is that? It wouldn't be, I mean, if it was just everybody's mind just making up whatever, it wouldn't be yeah. that way. There would be. Well, how about no this too? People people go into these things and they'll see the same thing. Yeah. With that, they're not communicating it with each other verbally, but they are having similar and and actually yeah. having nonverbal communication. And what is like, they, they, they were studying, they're trying to figure out like, are there these like telepathic abilities that these are giving people? And they even named a molecule, molecule telepathine. Uh, telepathy, one of these molecules that's in ayahuasca. So it's like these things, they do have, they do open people up to something that I believe is absolutely real. Uh, and that's why there's so many similar experiences there. Now the question becomes, what are these people really doing there and what's going on? Now, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a lot deeper of a subject, right? Like what, what is it that they're experiencing? Is this just fragments of your psyche or whatever? Or is this like these actual the demonic spiritual realms right and well and as we're going to see not just here but even in uh, altered states with its completely also gnostic luciferian perspective there's all the traits and characteristics of something demonic present and it's just ignored everyone just ignores this like yeah. i remember there's a dude one time he went with uh I the two buddies of mine from high school i didn't go with them on this but um there's they went to europe on a just a backpacking thing to have fun back when they were in their twenties and they were staying at a hostel and they bought some shrooms from somebody yeah. being idiots. And one of the dudes had a, like a violent, just, he went, he was trying to eat my buddy. No joke. Like he was attacking him, trying to bite him, acting like a monster, just like William Hurt will act like <laughs> acting like an ape, acting like a hungry ape, great ape. Right. Um, and then he came out of this, he came out of this experience and he had no recollection of this. And my other buddy was like, dude, you just tried to eat me for the last 45 minutes. You were growling and grunting like an animal. Right. Was he normal after that? Or did he ever recover from that? Some people go through this and they like, they they have those blackouts and then they're always a little bit off. Uh, I will tell you that this person, um, did not end up well, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, not not sad, to say that people can't be healed from any of these kinds of things, but you're right that if you go back to um, John Marx's book, uh, MK Ultra: Search for Manchurian Candidate, he has a chapter where he talks about Aldous Huxley discussing the fact that they were really interested in the entheogens and the, and the shrooms and all that because it had the effect of creating dissociation. So yeah. they, they called were, it psychotomimetic drugs. Yes, they were looking before. for a schizo inducing drugs. And in fact, when we get yeah. to altered states at the beginning, that's what William Hurt even says. He's like, I'm looking for the perfect schizo 
inducing, you know, explanation drug. Like he wants to be able to control and explain that experience. Yes. Yeah. No, and this is what's so, and now I'm not, I'm also not saying that people can't have beneficial experiences and maybe become better people after this, but is that because there's some magical, uh, you know, shamanic realm and, and the shamans are healing you. I would say that's not the case. I'd say that's yeah. because of the grace of God, by the grace of God, people can be healed. Right. I mean, it's not, sure. I think some of the, that's why I said earlier, some of the best, some, sometimes those bad trips that people have are the ones where they actually see how screwed up they are and they actually see really what's going on. Well, and yeah, how good things can come they. out of bad, but that doesn't mean I do bad to bring about good things. That's crazy. Exactly. But this is like, then constantly trying to induce this state and then becoming, becoming obsessed with it. I think you see a lot of people and this in the film, uh, was it Renegade, Blueberry, whatever. Um, the guy, this is his mode of healing, right? So yeah. in the beginning, the girl, the, the prostitute that he goes and sees, she gives him the cross, right? The girl who asked him if he believes in God, which is a really, I mean, it's it's a funny thing because this is kind of the, the new Western mythos about God is like, it's this impersonal, what would it's you, the, I mean, it's, 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 it's more of a nonsense. Yeah. It's the false. No. You don't so anyway, need, so she asked him if he believes in God. You don't, and then need, you don't need a personal God. This isn't the God you're looking for. Obi-Wan. It's the, it's the force. Oh, that's a good Obi-Wan, actually. Thank you. See, I don't, I don't like gay-ass movies like Star Wars. So I can't, I will not think well, that's funny that. because I've been telepathically emailing to you in my mind that I think that your name is Queer Gerbil in Indian. So... <laughs> I've noticed that you <laughs> we were trying to figure out your Indian name I had some good ones I like queer gerbil the best though but maybe humble <laughs> I like that gerbil I knew a guy in college uh, that people used to call gerbil and they called him gerbil because whenever somebody got acid they would make him eat it first to test it Yikes. how messed up is that right That's but this guy like this was a and then, you know I'm 18 years old and I, re I remember the, these people they would they would pick on this dude right it was a funny dynamic so all these people there everyone's tripping out everyone's taking mushrooms doing stuff like that and, and but it's it's like seventh grade power dynamics at the same time while these people so extrapolate that with a bunch of you know busted up people uh who are 30 40 years old and who have learned even more manipulation techniques over the years and weird social games that they play with people and just more demonically charged over the years and then they get a hold of these drugs and start administering them to other people in a group setting, right? Where, where there's weird power dynamics and you can, you know, people are inebriated, people worship you a little bit. They think you're some like, you know, bridge to God. And that's that's kind of what you see in the uh, in the, the the plant medicine community, right? Just basically a I bunch of- I bet you see a lot uh, of that, yeah, with, with, yeah. Seventh graders, like imagine like all the kids you knew in seventh grade who've been given, uh, very very powerful mind altering drugs that's that's kind of like the seventh how the, grade? the so yeah seventh graders right like that's like the the, the level of uh of, of development of most people now Dang. you know what i'm saying yeah it's like they're, they're they're still the same as they were when they were like 13 14 most people right oh yeah definitely evan schultz so then, he sends 1776 for july 4th he says i'm so glad that tristan is on i need him to promote my plant-based Italian cured meat alternative. We call it a salami legume. A salami legume. Salami legume. <laughs> nice. So what? What? What else? All right. So what else happened with this this movie? So they. Uh, let me let me read a couple it, more of the super chats and then we'll okay. get back to. This. So Alex Trimo, yeah, yeah. he's uh, Alex sends five bucks and he says, "I donated because Jay told me to." Well, then donate again. Right. That's not enough, dude. Donate not your enough. <laughs> donate your mama's savings. Donate your grandpappy's golden musket from the Civil War, bro. Mortgage your house, maybe. Sp Splitteth sends three dollars, and he says people use DMT in pagan context. Is it possible that DMT could be used to open up one to angelic influences? Yes, because demons are angels, bro. Uh, or could you gain godly insight? Again, we don't want to do bad to bring about good, right? Those are not the ordained means to go about getting uh, enlightenment, right? Uh, you will gain far more enlightenment reading your Bible than you will trying to speak to uh, Terrence McKenna and the, the machine clockwork queer elves. Uh, 
you're not going to keep you're not going to keep these uh you think you get these like great revelations but you don't it's you don't keep this stuff and it's it's more of a feeling that you, it's like your feelings get played i remember one of my back. trips i thought i was having like the most profound star wars philosophy inside i would watch star wars and i was tripping and I, and I drew a bunch of stuff and wrote some notes and then the next day i looked at my notes and it was like i had drawn uh chewbacca with giant eyes and it said ewok and I, so my my brilliant genius thought was that chewbacca was like a like it's like a, an evolved like a Harry and the Hendersons version of an Ewok. That was my. That it was, was like if the nothing. Ewoks got acid and and yeah. they got more, they they hyper accelerated their evolution through acid. They would become Chewbacca. That's it. So if you're That's looking for insight into, you know, Yetis, <laughs> then you wanna you wanna be tripping. But other than that, you're not gonna get anything profound. You're gonna get the same old crap that every damn shaman has ever said. We're all one. It's like, no, you come back, it's like, oh, everything's okay for like three days. And then you're right back to where you were. Yeah. And then Seriously, and you like, don't remember. You're like, you don't remember. And by the way, William Hurt, he doesn't remember anything. He's like, I don't remember what I was doing. What happened? What I said? <laughs> He's having mental breakdowns, yeah. grunting, acting like a possessed ape. What, what did puking, I do? It was so profound. Puking scorpions and stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm sorry. So, back to Blueberry. Okay. Yeah. So, so he... What happened is all right so he, he got nailed and then michael madsen's character comes in and he's seeking spiritual power he's trying to find the he's called mountain. the white sorcerer right so you got the white man right versus red man and yeah. vincent gallo is not the like, rapper right vincent gallo's in between and not the tobacco right vincent gallo vincent, in between. vincent cassell. cassell why do i keep saying that who is vincent, who is gallo? vincent gallo i don't even know bro who the hell is that man vincent cassell Julia lewis Julian Castle. Lewis's daddy is like some sort of a guy in the town. I mean, every everything that happens here is pretty much inconsequential until they get to the end of the film. Right. They're all chasing the treasure or whatever. They're looking for this treasure, treasure, and it ends up being a, 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 a sorcerer's battle. Yes. It's so they have to go to the holy mountains, and all the Indians are like, no, we can't go. We have to let them go now. It's and, like an uh, indigenous Saruman versus Gandalf basically he has to find like the secret cave where all the ayahuasca is basically yes. right so vincent gazelle dives into a big pond and then comes up in this underground cave right like goes into the underworld uh you know water portals going through yeah, the water portals the, and swims the into this thing motif. yes good job exactly and he leaves his hat like his hat's floating in the water and juliet lewis sees his hat she's like where's my man so he goes in there and he finds michael madsen's already there and then michael madsen takes like a thing made out of bone with like some indigenous stuff on it and drinks this, I don't know, probably made with a human bone. And there's like petrified Indians in there and stuff. And yes. he drinks the ayahuasca and lays down on the ground. And then, uh, then what happened? Like his little buddy was there too. The, in the indigenous shamans there, he's like hey, oh, 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 he's sitting there just tripping out, waiting. Like that's just what he's doing. He just hangs out there and waits for the white men to come and, <laughs> right. and have their sorcerer battles with the ayahuasca. So at this point, like, it doesn't make any sense, but it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's kind of interesting the way it's shot and stuff. Some of the cinematography is all right. Um, then Vincent Cassell drinks it, lays down, and they have a sorcerer battle in the ether. Exactly. Right. By the way, so, I'm so Vincent Gallo is a, like a grosser look, looking Vincent Cassell. They look, they look similar. They're both about the same. They both look nasty. Except that Both look like they would be chasing after Juliet Lewis. They look. Vincent Gallo looks like a, uh, a a dead hipster, basically. I'll show you what I mean. So you'll see, you'll see why I was getting confused. So there is Cassell. Vincent Cassell looks like a like a preemie Matthew McConaughey. Yes, he looks like <laughs> yeah. See, I mean they're both kind of they're both looking pretty gross, but yeah. I can't see. I know that's okay. Okay. <laughs> just take my you words. Just like take my words. Did, you think, did you think maybe I'd, if I took enough DMT, I'd be able to see him right now? Yeah, just take my word for it, dude. All right. All right. So they fall into the ether together and they have a battle. And then Vincent Cassell sees what really happened in the shootout thing. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, gasp, Vincent Cassell actually shot the hooker on accident. Right. Like, uh, he had suppressed they draw their memory. guns. Right. Yeah, Madsen shoots him in the in the arm, and then he jerks away and shoots the prostitute, and she dies, and it's all his fault. 
and he couldn't deal with it. So he suppressed the memory, but the medicine helped him to see the memories. But there's no real, it's funny because it's just like, oh, if you just see it and you're high enough, then you're going to be healed from it. But <laughs> where, where is this healing coming from? Like, what What is that? Yeah, it's like, uh, if you remember, there was a, it, there was a stage where Vincent Gallo had to do the trip with his Trail of Tears shaman buddy there who helped him, right? He, he sang that song and it like it pulled the, the big uh, roach insect thing out of him. Do you remember that? Yeah, because his, his songs, get to, they control the spirits. And this is another kind of aspect of yes. kind of the, this is, I mean, the Crowley stuff too, right? Like using that's drugs. A, yes, using that's actually an ancient Hindu idea that, uh, and Buddhists have it too, that you can, it's kind of like somatics. You know how somatics, the sound produces certain geometric forms, sounds do, notes. So the idea here is that if you, when you sing certain notes, you're uh, invoking certain powers uh you're kind of bringing them into david ike types of vibration right the vibrational reality right five sense reality it's all vibrations right? this kind of stuff so yeah, you get when you exactly. sing that note you're you're bringing that spirit into reality but who teaches them that those same spirits so they yeah. go into these states they get taught this by this spirit. they believe they usually believe they're ancestral spirits right like in the shamanism yeah. and they get taught this by you know their their parents who yeah. initiate them tristan and, likes his and, meat tristan's really gay tristan likes his meat right that kind of stuff exactly that's actually that's a really powerful invocation you gotta be <laughs> that careful one. with that one that's very very strong it might conjure up uh my my chatterbait my, my secret chatterbait. <laughs> your old your old account be popping up <laughs> my old chatterbait account might pop up right up. now tristan's old accounts yeah it's up. like if you say bloody mary 50 times if you sing if you chant that 20 times you see my old chatterbait um <laughs> but in, in the in the underground cave area right there there is like a petrified, like a mummy. There's a mummy in there, which I think is a really interesting thing because you've got this connection to ancestral spirits and this idea of the spirit of the ancestors is what we're contacting. And our ancestral spirits are informing us and guiding us. And a lot of these shamans believe that their ancestral spirits are the ones that give right. them their powers. Right. By right. the way, since they all believe in trickster spirits, why does anybody believe any spirit that they're contacting? In now, the all the rest of them are trickster spirits, but their ancestral spirits are real. Well, that's the that's real, real ones, right? Even though they tell real me daddy. to, you know, they tell me to, you know, grab my family's butts and to sacrifice. And they come as like jaguars and stuff. It's like, oh, I know it's my father because it was a jaguar. It's like, wait, yes, what? We call <laughs> these people little, say stuff like this. We call this, him Little shaman. Jaguar. He was Little yeah. Jaguar. But the, I mean, it's it's really sad. Like, so a lot of these people, you talk to them, and it's. When we talked about the, the init initiation in this in, involved the fracturing of the psyche, right? And these drugs have always been used as initiation ritual right. tools. And the ritual setting is what really tends to set up people. Like, like what did uh, Timothy Leary said, like set and setting, yes. right? And that's, that's these people were obsessed with ritual magic because that's a way of inducing a specific spiritual set and setting through like invocation, through chanting, through action and whatever, putting the pee pee and the poo poo and all this stuff. Uh, Jade knows more about this. You can ask him about like exactly those type of things. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's about, it's about power. Yeah. Really, and when, when you ask me about those things, I'm just going to link you to Tristan's old uh, accounts that he, he doesn't want people knowing about that he mentioned. So right. that'll teach you directly. You can see visual aids about all that. And that's actually what the account visual was called. aids that will give you. That was my aids. chatterbait name. It's visual aids with A I D S visual, exactly. visual, visual. <laughs> HIV plus aids. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, that was my underground name. That was my stripper name. <laughs> visual aids. <laughs> Lil aids. That was your rapper name. That's, that's my your, rapper, your name, rapper name. Is Lil, Lil aids. aids. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best rapper name Lil AIDS <laughs> he doesn't he's got the AIDS but he's cute about it because it's Lil AIDS <laughs> uh, so, so they're in there and they've got the they've got the mummy of their ancestors which and uh, I think it's kind of funny and there's also they showed some other kind of symbols of course there's a triangle with a little man like meditating in the triangle that they showed um, and yeah so then they, they battle it out he sees the truth and then Michael Madsen's character dies because he takes back his power or something. Yes. Uh, 
Let's see. Hellbug. I don't know. The, the Hellbug enters him. The Snake Tricks instead of the Matrix. Uh, there's a Magic Battle Trauma. Uh, I was going to sing a Matrix Indian song, but I couldn't think Please of, do. I couldn't Please, I can't yeah, remember, please do. As I can't Osho. remember how the Indian <laughs> song went, but it was. I was laughing when I was listening to it because it was funny, but now I forgot. I could remember, remember Enigma. This movie is like Enigma, right? The return to innocence. Remember that? That song. Huh? That's what this I don't know that song. Like. I'm not a boomer. That's what this movie's like. If if Enigma was tripping acid, that's this movie. Okay. <laughs> it's like if you, you gave acid to uh to uh, Knott's Berry Farm. Knott's Berry Farm with acid. <laughs> <laughs> it was everything that's like western themed socal theme park that's very far on acid um that's the end right oh then you then you, it's like juliette lewis is swimming in a pool and right. vincent cassell is swimming towards he, he gets liberated and now he can finally love juliette oh, he's lewis. liberated from the chick but now he finds real love i see yeah the the before he's liberated and and the spirit of the prostitute comes and kisses him and releases him from the bondage and he takes his power back from evil shaman man and he goes in the pool and swims towards juliet lewis's spread eagle bush and um and the the last one of the last shots is just juliet lewis like spread eagle with her legs <laughs> going right up towards her her giant Julia Lewis. I, I, Doing the eagle. Yeah. Yeah. So I, if you want to see Juliet Lewis's spread eagle bush, <laughs> you could watch this movie or you could, uh, or you could just go to Knott's Berry Farm on acid. You probably see Julia Lewis's bush there too. Uh, this movie reminded me kind of of the fountain a little bit. Remember that with Hugh hmm. Jackman and Rachel Weiss, uh, the Darren Aronofsky film, which is a weird mix of uh, ancient Aztec philosophy religion with Kabbalism with Zen. Do you remember the, the fountain? Yeah. Yeah. I think I like the fountain a little more. I think it's probably a better film. It is a better film. Yeah. It's a, it's a better film. Um, I did this one wasn't so bad. It's like I'm making fun of it, but actually like as a, as a, you know, artsy kind of concept movie, it's not so bad. I'll, Acting's I'll, all right. Um, I'll give this movie uh, three Three scalps. What do you give it? Three scalps. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That one scalp. It, that scalp um, scene was pretty gross with Digimon. Remember that? that the black dude. Yeah, that was kind of gross. I was like, ooh. He's like, I I pray to God that I could come back. <laughs> That's a the only other guy Digimon. that mentions God in the the only guy that mentions God in the whole movie. The second person mentions God. First is a prostitute yeah. that gives him the necklace. And then Pokemon hand suit. Exactly. Yeah, and then that guy who uh, he he prayed to God that he would go get revenge. Right? Yes, and then he his revenge he failed. Killed. Didn't it fail? He is killed. He gets killed yep. by evil Michael Madsen, the white man black sorcerer, the white black sorcerer. There were a few good shots. Like there were a few. There's some good like cinematography in it. I think uh, some of the shots of Michael Madsen being creepy were mm -hmm. pretty good. The shot of that guy on the table and he's acting like a bird or something and the the indian witch is kind of tripping out in her house a little bit and that that oh. pot of of uh dmt salsa they had that was pretty wild wasn't it funny they yeah oh well, or no wait is that no that's in that's that's altered states, states dude i'm sorry that's they got altered the states because there's something really funny about that too altered states the, let's get to that one that one's hilarious this movie's not so funny it's kind of more like uh i don't know it's 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 a little bit less hokey than altered states and it presents that psychedelic world in a, in a more honest way, I'd say, in that it shows the spiritual power dynamic that what it's actually really about for most of those people, how it's about power and spiritual battle and spiritual warfare, essentially. And it, but of yep. course, it's it, it kind of presents the psychedelics as some sort of a savior, which they're they're obviously not. I mean, this, there's nothing inherent about going into this hyper sensitive hyper suggestible state that's inherently healing and a lot of it can be very very dangerous too so not to if there are any kids out there trying to get the ayahuascas yeah exactly definitely. all right let's Think move twice. to altered states we got a super chat from densa diaz for twenty dollars he says is the father personal or is it the son and the spirit uh 
personal refers to hypostasis and so each of those are hypostases so each are personal they all share the quality or characteristic of personhood and so all three are uh, uniquely personal they're unique hypostases so let's go to altered states now this one is funny dude this one was cracking me up it was even dumber than i remembered it being from two years ago Um, i had a friend that used to drink a lot and he would when we watched this like five or six years ago he said i hate william hurt's face and i didn't understand (laughs) that until i watched it again and i realized that he's got a lot of face there's too much face going on with william hurt weird chin there's just too much got that butt chin he's he's got right and uh well the movie starts out with a distorted image of his face maybe that's why my friend said that let's see Starts out first shot, William Hurt's gross face in a weird tank, looking like he's in a a game Bioshock. <laughs> Bioshock. He's in the Bioshock tank. He kind of looks like my dad too. I'm not trying to be anti-dad here, but I don't know. Don't be ageist. It's a little weird. A little bit of William Hurt face going on. Look at that. What do y'all think? Jay just revealed his Illuminati bloodline. Is that too much face for y'all going on, or what do you think? He looks like Dick Cheney now. He used to he used to be a young, handsome man. Now he looks like like Dick Cheney. But anyway, I hurt William Hurt's face. Somebody's William Hate's face. <laughs> William Hate. <laughs> uh, so this is a movie about loosely John C. Lilly. Yes, John C. Lilly. And he is, of course, if you've not listened to the talks, we're going to presuppose that you have. Go listen to my talks on John C. Lilly. We just did one last week. Um, float tanks, implantable microchips, dolphin love. We got Hump and Dolphin right here with us. Uh, and mind control. And that's what John C. Lilly was about. Dissociation, float tanks, all of that mess. Yep. Openly, and I confirmed it with his biography he talks about it all in his biography it's not a it's not speculations it's confirmed now so i'm sure tristan you heard the um famous momentous famous alex jones on joe rogan podcast i don't know if you heard those three (laughs) remember how crazy that was remember that for sure sure. well uh when you go read john c Lilly. I thought, and I, I mean, I was like, where do they say this? I know John C. Lilly talks about some weird stuff in his book, Programming the Human Biocomputer, but I couldn't, I didn't know that he's got entire chapters about talking to the aliens and the elves. I like how the cover of his book looks like an L. Ron Hubbard book. Like, it, this is, it totally looks like this is Diane. I mean, look at that psycho not. He long. looks like a psycho. He looks like psycho not. He looks like, like I said, like he would be eating shrimp out of a dumpster. He looks Did he have insane, children? Dude. Did he have any kids? I think he does, yes. His daughter's probably gonna try to have me killed now. He's got a what are they doing now? What kind of what kind of people did his children grow up to be? I think there's a picture of his daughter in here. I can't remember. But she's half dolphin because he, he oh. married a dolphin. <laughs> nice. And so he created a an aerial, basically. If you've seen that movie. Yeah. Uh, with that Aaron. was a documentary, right? The Little Mermaid? Yeah, that's about John C. Lilly and his daughter. Um, we got another super <laughs> chat here. Before. Uh, DC Customs, he sends, or Lone Star, Texas himself says, are we, are weed and alcohol avoided entirely from an Orthodox perspective? Only on Sundays. The rest of the days, you are required to have a certain BA. Uh, C blood alcohol content level. It has to be 0.8 both. all day. You got to have 0.8. <laughs> you got to keep it at 0.888 symbolic numbers all day long, or else you're going to Hades, bro. DC <laughs> Customs sent 10 bucks and he says, I send this because at J said grandpappy. Is that a word you never heard before? It means your grandfather. That's what I meant by that word if you didn't know. Uh, also, Lil Aids up there in the corner needs to become a recurring character. What's up, Lil Aids? Rap <laughs> songs, grills, music videos, all of it. We need it all. Fleshed it, flesh it out, flesh light it out. More like it with Tristan up there. 
The okay. possibilities are numerous. Little AIDS. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that up. I, you I, have I to just... start writing some rhymes, bro. You have to write your bars <laughs> out. I can't. Write your bars. I don't, I don't want to drop some of my best. I, I, I'm not going to give all you peasants my freestyle. You guys don't get any of little AIDS today. Tristan's going to have to spit some bars out. My bars can't be spit right now. All right, I need more, we need more super chats. You guys give a, we get a hundred dollars of super chats. A little aids might spit some. Okay, spit some bars. Thank for you, me. I appreciate that. Um, how much? What are we at now? Let's see. We got twenty-six. So we almost up to a hundred. We're getting there. But uh, so let's get back to alter states because this is the the fun part. This stuff is really speaking of aids. This film will give it to you. <laughs> this yes, William. William Hate will give you the AIDS, give you the mind well, AIDS. They didn't discover AIDS until after this movie came out. That's, I mean, that is kind of, kind of interesting. Did you did you notice that there's a a similar theme between both movies of the trauma of the death, right? So William Hurt discusses when he goes to that party and he hits on that chick, and uh, <laughs> they're they're uh, having they're making coitus together. And he well, no, no, well, how about when he's hitting on her though? Like, no, just, I, well, that's what I was gonna say. Like, that was funny because you know <laughs> that this damn dude. Look at this. He didn't have no game. You think that dude had game? William Hurt just busts up and he's like, "I want to sleep with you tonight." Right? You think this dude had the balls? <laughs> he's like, "I want you to come home with me." Yeah. Do you think this dude she's had like? The balls I have a roommate. He's like, but, "Well, we could be on the couch." Yeah. She's like, "But what if we fall off?" <laughs> and then it's just, and then they're just sweaty coitus yeah. on the couch. Right. Like and then, he, and then he freaks out in the middle of the stuff and he has a trauma memory of his dad dying when he was 16, which is, which is actually kind of accurate because do you remember in, in the, that initial sequence, he sees a bunch of religious imagery. He sees, uh, um, the, the lamb of, he, he says, I, I saw Jesus and I, I feel bad. Right. Well, John C. Lilly actually says all that. He says that, when he was younger, he wanted to be a priest. He thought about religion. He wanted to sacrifice himself for some cause. And as he became older and became an atheist, he says, I want, I want to be a martyr uh, uh, for science. That's what he says. Hmm. He yeah, it's the same the story martyr. as uh, Moby. Moby wanted to be a priest. And then he became a musician. But now he's he's been saved because he's he a He sacrificed himself for the animals. He's a vegan. He has vegan face tattoos and stuff now. He's got like he's a, his animal rights tattooed on his arms. He has like like soy prison tattoos all over. <laughs> he <went to> <laughs> the, <laughs> I swear, no, he has vegan prison. straight edge. He has he has a vegan teardrop. Like it says VX right next to his eye. Huh. Speaking that means of, he the only the only thing he's killed is his own manhood. That's the only thing he could kill. Right. Because the teardrop means he's a murderer, right? Yeah, yeah. So Mo, I mean, Moby, Moby, and William Hurt in this movie—they both have a similar background. They both lost their faith young, due to well trauma. Yeah, but so he, so he sees the religious imagery. He sees the seven eyes on the lamb, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, and that's supposed to represent him moving away from his Christian imagery. And he was all spooked by this stuff, right? But it was like a demonic goat lamb, right? Like it was this like very yeah they were trying to present it in a in a scary way right like Mm -hmm. um and so then he goes to this boomer party with all the scientists right he's at this they're playing the doors right they're playing that song that song (laughs) i'm singing actually yeah this is the end and uh who's the actor that plays his friend with the beard the Jewish guy. Well, that, I was going to say that guy's funny because he's the science guy in every '70s movie. He's he plays science yeah. '70s science man in like five different movies, including Jaws. He's, That's what it is. Yeah. He's the Jaws. But he's in other ones too. He's in sci- He's in uh, like space. He's space science man as well. Yeah, absolutely. There, then, so he. But he's not he's half a, as annoying as Southern. 70s science man that dude was getting on my nerves but he would not yeah, he, well, he's he's like a hard empiricist right he's like he screams possible. yes and he screams like, every uh, line, this man. is impossible if you come out of there i'm gonna uh, <laughs> uh, if you come out of there as a monkey i'm gonna kill you yeah we'll, we'll get to him in a minute, but, but he goes uh, let's see. Mad. <laughs> uh anyway the, so the, the whole point the, the, what's interesting there is that um there's a connection between the sexuality and the and the occult and she, he even makes this point, and she later says it. She's like, 
even everything with you is this mystical journey of uh, of magic and occult or something like that. She's like, even making love to you is like a mystical experience. It's just a mystical experience. Why can't we You're just, just love so each other? You're just so deep. You're too deep for me, and I love you. And that's because, guess who wrote the introduction to this? Do you remember who? Did you hear who? It's JCL? Your, old Tim Leary wrote it. And you know who he it? says uh, the greatest person of the 20th century is next to John C. Lilly? Crowley, right? Crowley. Of so, course. No wonder. So it is sex magic, right? So going back and watching this, I was like, oh, there is this subtle Crowley theme here. No wonder. He exactly. Was- and he during the sexual intercourse yes. scene, he's he's tripping out having ecstatic visions of like satanic Luciferian right. sacrifices. So he admit, by the way, and he admit, do you remember when he admits to her that he's a nut? He's like, I'm insane. Hope you don't want, hope you don't mind. Right. And she's all into it. She's like, oh, but you're smart. You're insane. And she's just so but he's on this journey to to basically intellectualize the spiritual realm yes. right like he wants to figure out he wants to find the god molecule he wants to find out he wants to measure the spirituality it's this empirical boomer um worldview combined with the psychedelic boomer worldview and he ends up becoming the uber boomer in the end yes he's got that 70s dad game he's spitting that 70s dad game to become the 70s uber boomer and he does um and i like the timeline how it just suddenly skips ahead seven years and everything looks the same it's still 1980 <laughs> it's like seven years later and we have children and the, there's like five lines of dialogue in between the, him meeting his wife and then uh you, gonna divorce her do you remember when he leaned over his dad as his dad was dying words do you remember what his dad said it, like it's all terrible. Terrible. Right? Yeah, and he was predicting the movie. <laughs> that was a prediction of the movie. <laughs> oh, that is, uh, that's mad. That's real mad. Let's see. Sex is mad. She says, why does everything have to be a mystical experience with you? I feel like I'm being harpooned by a monk. What? That was a weird... weird Dude, the monk. dialogue is so bad. There's so many corny pieces of dialogue. Uh, she says, you're a Faustus. Um, and then they show that girl, and they're giving her a bunch of doses of, of DMT. Remember that girl, the, the crazy chick? She's talking about having religious experiences. That's all yeah. like that. This is where we get into the MK Ultra part, right? Now we're starting to see all this MK Ultra stuff, and he's got his little float tank, yes, full of jungle juice. He's in there floating in jungle juice, um, and now you can see why he would be dosing dolphins, right? I mean, because this dude is a a quack. I mean, this guy's crazy. And the movie remember, even shows him going back to the DNT girl. Remember what they asked her what she saw or what she felt? She saw and Jesus. What did right? she? Yeah, she said she like felt Jesus or something. Yeah. Saw Jesus. Uh, if Lily, oh, I had a dumb joke. So if if Lily was dosing dolphins, did seventy science man with the Jufro go and dose Jaws? <laughs> well, if he did, nobody would have died in that movie. Well, Jaws would have maybe that's that what Jaws one. was going. Jaws to the wall because he was he was dosed up by that's 70, why, yeah. 70 science man that's why Jaws 5 Jaws goes vegan never got made it just wouldn't have. <laughs> oh so once he once Jaws finally has his uh, one with everything moment yeah. he, he goes he, he has goes plant trip. based he's a plant he based real- shark <laughs> he realizes the error of his ways and he realizes that we're all just one I'm not going to eat fish anymore or humans. I'm not going to terrorize small towns anymore. I just want to be one with them. Now the and next the part. Uh, so remember when he goes to Mexico, this is real. This is based on like the Gordon Wasson, Carlos Castaneda going down to Mexico and, and JP Morgan, uh, the banking bankers is who uh, fought, uh, fought, funded all that going down to get the shrooms. And he goes down there. He says to reenact the Toltec rituals. Remember this? Mm-hmm. So he goes down there and he gets involved in this crazy ceremony. And I mean, everything in this ceremony is demonic, evil, gross, nasty. They're all dressed up like zombies, skulls everywhere. <laughs> and it's like, you can't figure out that this is demonic. He's seeing serpents. He's seeing nuclear explosions. They cut everything. his hand and they put his blood in the thing and they drink his blood in, in the ceremony. And he's sitting there with his wounded hand. Well, it's like, not demonic. It's not, there's nothing demonic about this, right? It's just this is all just you know. 
You know what I like too Highly is they show the fire, the fires underneath the cauldron, and the the indigenous are burning. I don't know where they get a cast iron cauldron in their in their ceremonies, but they got this huge cast iron cauldron, and he just goes up and then scoops it out of this boiling cauldron and drinks it. This <laughs> boiling hot ayahuasca, and everyone just drinks the boiling ayahuasca. I don't I don't know how how that's, that's supposed that, to work. That's the, yeah, that's some real salsa right there. That's chips and salsa for real. Um. Yeah, and so he sees this sequence that is the beginning of his, like his life's work, right? So he's from then on, he's sold on the power of the uh, entheogens and all this stuff. And that's a little kind of, I mean, it's kind of true, but actually what the, the movie doesn't ever touch on is that Lily was back in the 50s, 40s and 50s, he was doing all the uh, brain chip stuff. He was implanting all the uh, microchip electrodes, and he's he brags about. It. He's like, I can put. Show, he said, they I show can put, the electrodes on the. Huh? They show in the film. They show there's electrodes all over their heads when they're going in the float tank. They show no, but he says he says back in he says in 1952 he said I could put electrodes in a monkey's brain and have him orgasming all day long. I'm not mm-hmm. joking. Like he literally says that. He says well, that was awesome. He says we could. He says we could make them the monkeys. Happy all day. Just push a button. Did you hear that, Joe Rogan? You can all be monkey gods orgasming all day, all day with your fleshlights. <laughs> you can all, if we just go into the imagination, we will realize the imagination is God. And Joe Rogan lives in the imagination where we all have the fleshlights of the gods, fleshlights of the gods. all yes. around us. So that, right. I mean, he does have the electrodes, but they don't, mentioned that he was doing all this top secret work to do with signals research and, and mind control, which by the way, I'll tell you my theory on what all that dolphin stuff was. They weren't dosing dolphins to try to see if he could talk to dolphins and figure out dolphin code. They were studying signals research so that they could create yeah. mind control technology. That's what it was really about. That's why brain he was machine working interface. Brain chips, they yeah. wanted they wanted us to make synthetic telepathy using yes. drugs and machines. Right. Um, so he sees all this crazy mess. He see it's like a giant brain diarrhea trip is what he sees. And I said that because the last time I ate Mexican, I got some brain diarrhea. Trip, Last like. <laughs> time I had a, a chips and salsa DMT cauldron of witch's brew. Uh, let's see. What about like the uh, nihilist? The, the, the sequence, of so the shaman tells him, he says, you will see spark. Then you will see a crack. Then you will see the nothing. Right. <laughs> then you will be reborn. I was like, what? That's, that's, you got to cross the abyss. You got to destroy your ego. Got to be, re- this is the shamanic thing. Become nothing. You and become then you be nothing. reconstituted as what? Right. It's never as ending story stuff. The nothing, right? You got to, you got to become nothing. It's all Luciferian. Uh, let's see. They're all dressed. Up. Oh, remember he saw the mushroom as a mushroom cloud. That was weird. That was later on. That was like his next trip down the road, but Anyway, he gets obsessed with this. Like, so he's obsessed with going in the tank and he keeps doing it. And it's ruining everything in his life. His relationships, his colleagues, everybody's getting sick of him because he's acting like a damn loon, like a monkey. And this is like this is like the Western empiricist replacement for spiritual journeys, right? Somebody like this would become a monk, right? Would have a structure of you know, the, of life that they could seek spirituality and they could seek God, but in this way where people have done away with God in the West, in this uh, this distorted way we go about life now, what do they have? What do people like this really have? They they go and fry themselves out and become schizos, or they just become insufferable to everyone around them and depressed nihilists. <laughs> he says, he says, I just saw the birth of a mountain. <laughs> it's like what? The birth of a mountain. Who cares? You like, idiot. Who cares, dude? <laughs> they didn't see a birth of a mountain. It's, oh, I mean, he's supposed to be a scientist, and he thinks that everything that he's experiencing in his trips is a real alternate universe that he believes he can manifest into this universe. And that that's yeah. kind of true. He actually kind of says that in the book. But, I mean, that's just ludicrous. But, by the way, 
modern scientism aficionados, they all said the very same thing. They say, the multiverse, oh, we all live in a multiverse where every possibility, every potentiality is reality. So that would mean that there is a universe where God exists. So actually all the atheists believe in God now. But I mean, it's just total nonsense, total incoherent, total contradiction. But he actually says this, right? And remember, that's when the science guy, the, the Southern 70s science man, we got, we got Jewish science man and we got redneck science man, right? redneck 70s science man. And he has a meltdown, screams all of his lines for like five minutes straight. And he's like, he's like, man, I'm so tired of your damn Kabbalistic quantum bullshit. I can't take yeah. no more of this. Get out of that damn tank and let me do a CAT scan on your brain. Screaming for five minutes. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy's annoying. But but then and then it be, it becomes real. Then it gets really real because William Hurt proves when he X-rays his body after he comes out of his super trip of the you know the drug that he brings back from the the Mexican shamans. He comes back, goes in the in the float tank, doses himself, and they X-ray him afterwards. And <gasps> the X-rays was the monkey. He was devolving. Evolution his cat skin was real. a monkey. <laughs> The evolution is real. There's an X-ray, and you're a gorilla. His so then ex, they, <laughs> his, his yeah his <laughs> his cat scan was a monkey. You, you just got a monkey. You, this is, is is there anything abnormal about this? The guy's like, oh, that's a that's what the is stupid. That's like this movie is He's leading like, you down this journey of you're actually into this. You know, it's sensible up until that point, and then it just becomes totally retarded, like a Geico ad where he jumps out of the tank. As a ape, as a caveman, what? Yeah, yeah he becomes and he becomes in like a, no, not even a cave, like a proto-human hair running around. He becomes around, a proto-human being, beating things with with uh, uh, bones and shit. And it's like, what? From an acid yeah. trip? You can't actually turn into the thing that you're having an acid trip about, bro. Sorry. No, he did because he was so. It was the most powerful acid trip. He tapped so deep into it because of the tank. He went he in the tank. Manifested the trip into reality. So the stupid. tank plus the ayahuasca drops, and that made he was the most powerful manifester. But look, I mean, this this actually this goes back to like the whole ritual magic Petroleum thing as well, yeah, right? He manifested reality because he was the magus. Yeah, he becomes this powerful magician, is able to control reality and people around him. Which by controlling reality, they mean controlling people's perception of the world around them. That's what these people, these magic magicians, they don't mean they're actually, they don't, they're not going to actually, you know, create a new universe. They believe that they're controlling people's perception of the universe, which then makes the universe, right? So they, they have this distorted kind of this Gnostic view of your mind is God. And if we can just control everyone's mind, then we can become like the over God or something like that. It's really stupid. And the John C. Lilly character, instead of becoming this powerful magician like Crowley, he becomes this basically madman consumed by the super etheric power of evolution that he's harnessed and he doesn't know which way in evolution he's going to go and it's very uh he regressed yeah, into his monkey nuts and went yes. back he said he says i have stored within me millennia of the monkey nuts of my ancestors and i regressed into those memories in my testes and brings them back he he, he retrieves <laughs> those regressive memories and he becomes his ape self and then he runs off to the zoo. Why? No, animals don't run to the zoo. They run away from the zoo. I don't understand. That. I mean, he and then he he threw a rock at a sheep. You ever seen a sheep at a zoo? I've never seen sheep at the zoo. I've there was like zoo. a two thousand sheep in that zoo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They were everywhere. What zoo? But is they didn't. This, even, they looked like goats too. They were like, <laughs> right. like what kind of weird looking it, right? sheep were those? He, he goes full sverage to... on that thing, and he's got it smeared all over his face. He'd be on sverage ah, eating that. Must eat the blood. So he eats the blood of the sheep. And then <laughs> it was so bad. Oh, well, what about when he comes? He goes in the in the tank, and he says. He's dictating all this, right? He's tripping out. He's tripping so hard, but at the same time, he's describing it and he's saying, "I'm a, I'm a proto-human. There's this this uh, quadruped monkey, and it, it just jumped out of a tree. Oh, it's magnificent! It's eating a, a a small sheep now." So he's seeing like what's going to happen in the future with him, and then he comes out of the tank and he's got blood all over his mouth, and it's like this, yeah. you know, scientism. Yeah, I miracle. was wondering that. Why is he bleeding when he walk, comes out of it? It's supposed to be. In, it's like the the reality is yeah, bleeding through because it, yeah. it was so powerful. He, he beats the shit out of a janitor. That was wild. Yeah, almost. I thought he killed him. I was like, "Why is this guy yeah, he not going to the cop jail? And then the night, the night cop, rent the cop, and then he beat the crap out of a janitor. But it was okay. It was all good. It doesn't matter. 
But remember, too, uh, th why is ancient primal, why is that more spiritual, right? There's yeah. always this assumption that tribes rolling around, you know, in feces and wearing a loincloth, that's more spiritual. <laughs> really? Why? Yeah. It's not. I think mean, people don't have oh, theology. It's ancient, bro, theology. It's ancient. They can't. They can't interpret history without the fall, right? Mm -hmm. And so then they, they have this. Maybe deep down, they're yearning for the state before the fall. Did and you notice too? Nobody ever regresses to something stupid or shitty. Like they don't ever regress to being a bee. They don't regress to being a uh, an STD or a little AIDS or a dust mite. Or, you know, it's always, oh, it's a monkey. But he didn't regress back any further than that. I mean, wh why is he regressing to a monkey? Well, it's because of it's oh, he did. Remember in the end, he regresses to like the cosmic yeah. pond scum. Yeah, he becomes like man. the proto, uh, the protozoa or whatever the uh, first. The primordial uh, thought. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what right? he calls it. The first, I became the first thought. <laughs> the T-H-O-T, the more like it. The first thought. Uh let's see he's he becomes star child he gets reborn remember that he becomes like his light being and she has to reach into the trip and pull him out remember that Dude, at this point you're you're so done with this movie and uh, this yeah. is you got to get through like it becomes 2001 it's like it becomes kubert yeah. level and you could tell they were trying to go for kubert level stuff they're just like let's just do 2001 yeah just yeah. throw a let's bunch of like you know space jizz uh on the screen literally that's what it's like space yeah. jizz everywhere on the screen it's gross and point, William like, Kurt comes back from his family. and he yeah. touches his wife and she becomes lava. I don't know. She, she screams as lava and then he beats the wall a few times. But he beats it enough that it but brings he beats him it back. enough that he gets back to normal and love says, and do you remember, do you remember his great last line? He has a great last line. He says, I saw the truth that there is no truth. <laughs> yes. That's the end of the movie. I saw the truth that there is no truth, but it's okay. Because we love each other. So then, then if there's they, no uh, truth, then you don't love each other, dummy. Yeah. Somebody needs no, but to it's true. Jay, slap. don't, don't come on. Bro. William Hurt, on. he's a slap. There's no truth. But that's the kind of bull <laughs> crap that you would get in Lily's book. He would, he says that kind of crap. Like, this is the stupidest movie I've ever seen. This is so bad. And it's so, like I said, it's the, this, this is the, the boomer generation incarnate, right? The scientism. Uh, yes. Just obsessive relativism, the scientism, the science and the medicine, shamanism, and then and then ending up just okay. We'll just idolize fake relationships with each other. Screw it. Well, let's just worship each other. Yeah. Hence, boomer divorce. Right. I mean, you know, yeah. after he says that, they're about to get a divorce. There right. is no truth, but then they're naked, and she's like, "Oh, they're hugging," and they're yeah. suddenly naked and hugging. They're about and to everything's get a divorce. Okay. He's about to. Move down to Florida, set up his uh, his dolphin prostitution ring. Like uh, that's right. what she's gonna, she's going to become a, a massage therapist, Reiki master, <laughs> while he's down there uh, messing with humping dolphin. Right, right. He's going to be he's going to be putting his dinghy in a dolphin's blowhole. <laughs> she's going to and she's going to have to she'll have to give it therapy afterwards. She'll have to do Reiki on the dolphin that he rapes. <laughs> dolphin, Ra dolphin Reiki masters. That's it. That's all in it. Uh, so the what is this movie it, like? This movie is like, if you've ever wanted to have a bad acid trip with a boomer, that's what this movie, because half of this movie is his acid trips. And the other half of his movie is just kind of sitting around with boomer 70 scientists shooting the shit. That's what this movie is. This movie is so bad that it made the renegade one. It's like, it's like, oh, it's kind of relieving. <laughs> so the renegade movie, it's like, as far this as. This one was so bad, it was entertaining because I knew we were going to have fun with it, but. Uh, Dude, there's so many bad lines. Yeah. I should have took taken notes, but there's so many. We're just Jessica and I were just laughing the whole time. How, how many Geico cavemen do you give this movie? I give this movie out of how many? Out of out of four, all right, I, out of fourteen billion Geico cavemen because Happy Birthday Universe, the age of the universe, fourteen billion years exactly was born today. I give it. Three billion Geico cavemen. Seventeen seventy-six billion, billion years ago. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, I'll give it three and a half. Um, and, and William hurt my feelings with this movie. I want. I want to look up some quotes from this movie because there's so many great. Yeah, you do lines. that. I want to read these super chats. DC Custom says, 
Big dreams all start small. Little aides needs to get him some tinfoil. Wrap them teeth. Get a hoodie. Of course, right. Tristan always wears a hoodie. That's like the only thing. Tristan has two garments. He wears a hoodie and he wears a tank top. That's the only two things. You go into his closet, dude. You open up that closet that's made out of mud. Like the whole house. It's like the made. racial undertones of this, mud. dude. It's Just a mud. Like all this, like there's a lot of racial undertones that I'm really not appreciating. I mean, I've. Just because I'm South American, I'm ethnic. You, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta tell me I gotta wear hoodies now. Like that's all I'm allowed to wear. That's all that's in your. That what you're saying, right? When you got married, when you got married, you had a tuxedo that was a a, a tank top hoodie. <laughs> it was a tank that's top of the hood. That was what you got married that's to, right. dude. <laughs> well, you made so that's all that's in my closet. What's wrong with being in the closet? I mean, that's something you know a little Ooh. bit about, right? I mean, look, this is, it's been a really nice fight. I'm glad we watched two movies, right? So, Jay, these are two movies that Jay can really relate to, right? So, I'm gonna have to call the, you the Renegade Animal movie. Again. He could really relate to Renegade because Jay's killed many hookers. Um, and he can also, he can really relate to, to Altered States because he's also, uh, he's also been in a lot of closed room environments with monkeys and uh, it had questionable things happen. So. <laughs> Well, at least in my closet, we got more than two garments. And by the way, Tristan, when he's doing his streams, that's the only garment he's got on. There's nothing from the bottom down. It's empty. <laughs> There's nothing, <laughs> There's nothing but a, he's just got that hoodie. That's the only thing he wears around. And I like, actually the, nat- the natives, I'm are actually all, the natives who all wear loincloths around him in that in that indigenous region. They're tired of Tristan. They're like, man, that dude, that white dude over there, he is weird, man. We need him to put some whitey tidies on or something because he's more native they, than the native. Their, they want me to blow blow the tobacco smoke on them in the in our <laughs> in, the in our reiki ceremonies with william hurt's wife doing doing reiki therapy well you have to horses. get down off of your roof from spying on the boomers in the sex tents all night <laughs> that's not a spy I'm, I'm in the boomer sex tents dude <laughs> i'm knee deep knee deep in boomer fluids. that's what you get live streamed on that channel he was talking about earlier is that gross stuff yeah, that's my other channel. It's called Boomer Fluids. You can find that on <laughs> That was the end of this movie. Was the visions that, that William Hurt was seeing was Boomer Fluids. It was that Boomer was the Fluids. Big, he was seeing the whole, thing the, is- the whole universe in his mind is created by the Big Boomer Bang. Literally. It was the Big Boomer Bang in his mind that created the universe. If you notice that. <laughs> did you see all the he, he, he was so enlightened that he recreated the Big Bang. The whole thing is so stupid. But it really it does show kind of that, that pre-less, that, you know... Yeah, the total psychotic, you know, I, I am everything and everything is me. And look, yes. uh, I, I know everything. And I and what you and everything they think they know these people, it's just what they've already been told by the culture that they're in, yeah. right? By what what uh, what's his face? Uh, Leary would call the set right. and the setting. Right. It's like he just confirms all his own biases. Oh, look, there's monkeys. We was monkeys. It's evolution. Oh, look, there's yeah. the primordial soup and I'm going to become it. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's all a confirmation bias psychosis. Primordial soup was, uh, was taco soup. Somebody said Tristan lives in a mud igloo with a mud closet filled with hoodies and tank tops. <laughs> that was my joke, dude. What are you talking about? You <laughs> I just love that quote. I know what I say. I said, you built your house. You were bragging about it. It's all made out of mud that y'all stacked up. I know. I'm just, it's so funny when closet you see it. And there's nothing but two garments in there. When you see it written out, it's it's even funnier for some reason. <laughs> see, you should we just could, change we the name have a of the show stream where we just <laughs> we could have a show where we just bust on each other, dude. We could just roast, dude. We have to put that. On. That's just for the chatter page. <laughs> fans only. Only fans. You say these things, you don't realize what you're saying when you say them, Jay. <laughs> Uh, can you tell I've been listening to Theo Vaughn? I start doing these Theo Vaughn style stories. Man, one time we had a dude that was a damn call it name of Tristan. It was a dude named yeah, we called Tristan. Him Tristan. He was slick, man. And that dude he, was he had a weird. closet, man, and it was just full of tank tops. He was he beautiful, was but it was up. weird living in a damn mud igloo down the road, right? And we he was, was real man, poor. but he was a weird little dude too. <laughs> and he liking boomer women, man. He run out there to the tents at night and start looking, start lusting after them boomer women, right? Gang, gang. <laughs> Y'all like my Theo Vaughn impersonation? <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. I think we had another super chat. Let's see. Uh, Vro says, for five bucks, have you either either of you watched, oh, thank you, the British show, Utopia. Yes, Tristan and I have for months 
and Mont's been talking about doing Utopia. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta finish it. Dude, that show is so deep though. It's like if you if you just do an analysis on that show, you'll get kicked off of YouTube because there's so much in it. Tom, I feel like it's, I feel like there's too much in that. He says my name is Tom Green. Okay, okay, dude. But thank you for that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do Utopia. I'm about. I keep rewatching it, so I've watched it twice up through season one. So like almost to the end of season one twice. So, and I do have notes. So and you haven't seen the first episode of season two though. I have not because that's a good one. You're you're gonna really like uh, season two episode one. It's a good one. Awesome. We're gonna get on that next. DC Custom says for five dollars, can you review Pi? Yeah, I guess I should. That's, I mean, if we finally got to Holy Mountain, then we got to finally get to Pi because that's... Pi is another one of those unwatchable. Of those, uh, you know, esoteric movies. One of those Darren Aronofsky's. Aronofsky, it's like his. he just wants to turn you schizophrenic with a film. That's, that's his true. goal. Every film, he's like, I want to make you a schizophrenic at the end of it. That's true, yeah. Black Swan, that one was another disgusting... That one was wild, too, because that was about the split in her psyche. Remember the whole thing was, uh, Mila, he, Mila Kunis yeah. was a lesbian in her head. She had a lesbian infesting her head. Remember that? Yeah, that movie was crazy. That was wild, man. How would Theo Vaughn say it? Man, I was watching that damn black swan and old Natalie Portman had a, had a lesbian in her head. She had, that bitch had a lesbian stuck up in her head. I had doctors tell me one time that I had a bunch of lesbians up in my head. <laughs> I had the heart of a lesbian. <laughs> the heart of a lesbian. He's one of the blind. few funny comedians now, right? Yeah, Theo he's Vaughn. Great. Yeah. Sam Hyde, well, Theo Vaughn. Funny. Sam Hyde, Theo Vaughn. Who's at the top of the totem pole there? There's this other guy that's got a YouTube channel now, Ryan Long. He has some funny videos right now. Ryan Long? I have to check it Yeah, out. Ryan Long. Check out his channel. He has a few funny ones. Okay. His edits, the short edits. Okay. But Theo's got this way, like he could just talk for ten minutes and say nothing and be His hilarious. crazy stories are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Theo's great at storytelling. Uh, oh wait, we we'll got another super chat here. Uh, Theo would be funny, st even if he cut his mullet, he'd be funny too. Right? It's like the kind of guy. Of, it's not just the, it's not just the look. No, we don't have another. He'd super shave chat. his head and be hilarious, but he, he's got to keep the mullet. All right, y'all. Um, Tristan's channel is linked if you if you feel dirty and you want to go see all that nasty stuff he's <laughs> into his channel is linked not his youtube channel his other hidden channel that he don't want anybody to know about that one's linked if you want to go watch all that nasty stuff um but thank y'all uh anything you want to leave us with tristan nah man I, it was a good stream sorry we had i know we Watching that, uh, that the first movie we talked about might have been kind of hard bringing up the memories of like, yeah, you know, I mean, it was about killing hookers, right? So, you know, I mean, there might be it might have brought up brought off some weird memories for you, or whatever. Ooh, so, below the sorry, belt, was, dude, he's going below the belt, <laughs> nasty. Uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was fun, man. We'll, I don't know what we'll do next. Maybe we'll do the uh, we should do Utopia should, next. Everybody's been saying do Utopia, Toby is crazy. I'll have to watch we'll it. We'll do again that too. next, uh. And I'll I'll get back on it. Finish season one. All right, man. I like the music. They did a good job on the soundtrack of Utopia. Cool, dude. It was the little AIDS rap on that. Little AIDS rap. We'll, have to, we'll let you check. do your little. You could do some freestyle, right? Dude, you can't just call me at the freestyle. You got to do your. You got to do your verse. Spit your bars. Battle rap. And we then, should do that. Next I can, time I can we'll, do, we'll do a battle rap. Uh, cut down. We'll do a. Rap battle, roasted, cut down thing next time. How's that? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm serious. Let's so, do that. It'd be funny. Everybody like that. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. All right, we'll dude. I'll, everybody I'll subscribe to Tristan. Uh, and thank you for the super chats. And everybody have a good night.